Hey everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is another day the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. It's Monday morning and so we give God thanks for a um, a restful night of rest, um, a peaceful night of rest. Um, and we thank him for keeping us over the weekends, right? Um, an opportunity to start another week of Mac in the morning. What's going on, Brent Haynes? Another week of it. And so I thank you for... Um, allow me into your private space. Hey, Kendra, good morning to you. Corey, what's up, man? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, man. Um, so I celebrate you all for, um, for your support to keep this, to keep this, um, time of encouragement, inspiration, and motivation going. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the father in prayer so we can spend our time well. Hey, Tiffany, good morning to you. Missed you yesterday. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for um, knowing who you are. Thank you for the journey that we've had to pursue you and to get to know you in a better and in a more intimate way. Lord, we so, uh, are so appreciative of the fellowship. Um, thank you for your love, your, your, your free grace, your free love that you continue to extend to us. And we just love you with all that we have. We honor you and thank you for our time together online with our brothers and sisters of like minds and like faiths. And for even those that are on, that are that are contemplating on trusting you. Thank you for the opportunity for the conversation. Let it be for us, whatever your desire is for it to be. And our response will be that of yes and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. What's going on, Troy? Good to see you, man. It was great seeing you guys yesterday. So listen, um, this is the year of spiritual clarity. 2020, spiritual clarity. And uh, we have made the selection of Ephesians 1. 17 and 18 as our core verses for the year. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. And um, those verses say, Paul talks to the church, this new church in Ephesus. He says, I continue praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in order for you to know him better. Verse 18 says, um, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened in order that you may know the know the the hope to which you are called the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people all right so we are asking for um god to grant us a spirit of uh, wisdom and revelation only to enhance our intimacy with the father just to know him better all right so we had a great time last month as we started and closed our first series. Hey, Marcus, good morning, man. Good, missed you yesterday. We um, closed our first series for the year. Now we're into our second one, uh, which is called Relationship Rehab. Relationship Rehab, all right? And so um, the core verse for the month is going to be um, John 3 and 3. And this is the core verse for the month. John 3 and 3, which says, Jesus replied, um, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's our core verse for the, for the month. Um, because everything that I am going to um, repeat from the word of God the only way you will be willing to accept it is that you're born again. Because what Jesus is going to say to us about relationships, if you don't believe in him, believe in his resurrection, you're not going to believe what he says about relationships. All right. So that's the core. And we're going to keep going back to it, that you must be born again. You must be born again. Uh, I started off with, I'm going to start off with this thought by saying you cannot start your life until you're born. And in the same manner, you cannot start your spiritual life until you are reborn. You got to be born again, everybody. Uh, this is what separates us from other thoughts and, um, and other religions is that we believe that we have been given the power of the Lord to that that kills the old flesh and the new new life has come because of our accepting of Jesus Christ all right so we're going to be 
um, for the week in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, um, verses, starting with verse number three. Starting with verse number three is, um, is where we'll be, okay? So, um, Matthew 19, let me pull it up. Thought I had it up, but I didn't have it up. Now I do. So Matthew 19, uh, and we will begin with verse three. All right, so now listen, we're going to be dealing with Jesus's um, acknowledgement and what Jesus has to say about relationships um, for, for, um, for the month. We may step off just a little bit to read some other passages in the New Testament, but we're going to stick with Jesus um, for this week and next week, what Jesus has to say for sure about relationships, all right? So um, so let's go with the idea of, um, what is it, WDJS, what did Jesus say? So we're going to make sure that we, um, what's going on, TP? We're going to make sure that we are willing to read and and um, retain what Jesus says. What did Jesus say about relationships? What what what, what does words say uh, about relationships? So now uh, I'm asking you to enter into our our rehab. So the the series for this month is entitled uh, Relationship Rehab. Relationship Rehab. So we're going to. I'm inviting you into this place for for rehab. Now listen, when you step into rehab. Um, now, we may know this per experience, or we've read it, or we've had conversations with people that have been in rehab before. When you step into rehab, it's not about anybody else. It's only about you. It's only about the person that's in rehab. That person is the one that, that must be willing to do the work. Not only to get out of rehab, hey, Missy, not only to get out of rehab, but to be better, to be whole, to be right, Okay. So all of us, we have now entered into our relationship rehab. Now, the easiest thing we can do in rehab is, is go against, hey, Joyce, good morning. The easiest thing we can do in rehab is to try to go against and be on the defensive of what someone may say to us. But that's the wrong thing, all right? If we're going to be in, in rehab, and we walked in, we signed up, we must be willing to hear the truth. And here it is, hear the truth from authority on how we should be responding to our relationships. All right, so for this week, we're gonna deal with Jesus. Jesus and marriage. I think it's pretty, makes good sense to hear what authority says, um, what Jesus himself, where becoming flesh, said um, specifically about marriage. All right, so that's where we're going to be. So as we look here in um, Matthew 19, uh, beginning with verse number three, it says this, some Pharisees, the word of the Lord, came to him to test him. They asked, uh, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you heard, replied, he replied, um, that at the beginning, the, the creator made, made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and unite to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no man separate. Uh-oh, all right. So I know you're probably thinking, this man was preaching about divorce. Well, I had to, all right? Uh, that's what the Spirit told me to preach. We got to preach it, so we're going to talk about it this week. So here we have um, um, these Pharisees are coming to Jesus for the second time, well, for multiple times, but for the second time, according to Matthew's writing, to ask him about the same topic. If you look in um, Matthew chapter five, 
they come to him and ask him about um, divorce. And typically when someone comes and asks you the same question, they're coming to see if you're going to change your answer. <laughs> uh, but when you tell the truth, you don't have to change the answer, right? <laughs> yes, sir. We got to work it out. So they come and they ask him again, um, dealing with the subject of divorce. And so Jesus um, takes it a step further than what he did in Matt, in chapter five. And he talks to them about this, giving them the same answer rather, um, and, and, and still about what divorce, what divorce is and the kingdom's look on divorce, right? And so they're testing him. So listen, um, people are going to test you. So the best thing we could do is to tell the truth all the time. Don't try to um, make it look pretty and slice it down and try to shave off the edges. No, people need to know the truth and we need to tell them the truth. So why lie when the truth will do? Tell them the truth. And at the end of the day, that's all people want is the truth. Because now I can make the best decision for me because I have all the right information. So tell them the truth. So they came and test Jesus and they said, and Jesus says, uh, they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Uh, any and every reason. Now, this is an interesting piece, right? Um, he, and in Jesus' response, he says, haven't you, um, haven't you read that at the beginning of the creator made them male and female? And said, for this is man, and for, for this reason, man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife and two will become one flesh. So get this. So Jesus answers the question with information they already know. So here they are trying to catch Jesus slipping, and he takes them to their source. Now, these are Pharisees, and, and the Pharisees held um, Moses to a high regard, right? He's one, one of the patriarchal fathers. Um, and so he takes them to their, um, to a, a, a information, to a text that they should know. Hey, Valerie, good morning, man. Listen. When we um, have the opportunity to have conversations with people, typically we are having conversations about something that people already know the truth about. They already know what they're supposed to be doing. They already know what they should do. So it's not, a, it's not upon us to come up with some new way of saying it or to give them a pass so that they don't have to do what they, what they signed up to do. No, it's our task to take them to the truth, take them to a source that they respect, and let's gather the truth. Now, I'm not talking about if a person, you know, studies Scientology, take them to their source. No, no, no. We take them to the original source. We take them to the word of God, and we show them the consistency in God's word uh, answering that particular topic. And listen, you may not know all the, the scriptures right off the bat, but once somebody takes you, brings you a question and you don't, understand, you don't know the answer, say, listen, can you give me a, a day and, and let me let me work this out, and I'm gonna show you exactly how the scriptures I'm partnering and saying the same thing. And you go home and you do your study. You come back, you can present your information, right? Yeah. And so Jesus says, um, "Don't you know it's already written?" <laughs> so he got them. He has their attention, their focus on them because they want to know what is he getting ready to pull up, right? And so he takes them to, he takes them to, uh, and says it. Um, uh, haven't you read uh, in the book of Genesis as well as Deuteronomy, God had already spoken to Moses on the on regards uh, regarding divorce, regarding divorce, regarding marriage. Um, it was already done. Um, my um, my computer just went crazy. Uh, it, it was it it, it was um. It was already satisfied um, because God had already spoken about divorce and about marriage, right? And so here they are wanting to see if they can catch Jesus. <laughs> Listen, everybody, um, I believe what people want to do, they want to see if they can catch you speaking out of turn. They want to see if they can, they can, they can catch you um, trying to answer a question out of your own wit, out of your own knowledge. 
but we're not going to do that, right? We're going to be wise enough to pull ourselves to the side and 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 find out the answer um, per what God would have us to say, right? So in Deuteronomy um, twenty four and one um, is the is the is is the scripture in the text where hey Yashika, good morning to you where divorce was permitted. It, that's in Deuteronomy twenty four and one where divorce was permit, permitted for um, for un, for any unseemingly thing, right? Um, they were allowed, Moses allowed men to divorce their wives. Um, now listen, uh, if I had to give you a point right here, it would, see, it would say that Jesus says no. Hey, Tiffany, good morning. Jesus says no. Uh, it is not lawful. Let me make sure we're clear. It is not lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and everything. It's not. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a good time talking about this. It's not lawful to do that. Look at the, look at the text. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and everything? No. Now, listen, if you're not born again, you're going to have an issue with this conversation this week because divorce is not the answer to satisfy your lack of good, bad judgment. There are some people that, that, that found themselves getting married. Uh, yes, uh, that, there you go. It, 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 that, that found themselves getting married um, because they got caught up in emotion. Or they, they kept on going with it and they didn't want to stop they didn't want to stop um, the proceedings um, before the wedding started or before they, people even, even gathered. Um, and even once people gathered because they didn't want to embarrass anybody. Listen, um, marriage should not be entered into through shame. Now listen, I'm going to make somebody upset, but back in the day, I, I heard about the shotgun weddings. And, you know, shotgun wedding was if, a, if, a, if two a young men and one young woman get together and they had sex before marriage and um, and the young lady, they end, end up pregnant. The young lady's pregnant. Um, that, that father would have a shotgun and make that young man marry um, his daughter. You shouldn't marry anybody from shame or be forced to marry anybody. I don't believe that, um, that, uh, that, that one mistake in sin should push you to make a covenant, <laughs> a covenant that came out of your sin. That doesn't make any sense. Now, now if, if people are, are, are ready for it, go right ahead. Let's, let's, let's sit down for some counseling. Let's get it done. But don't get married because somebody is making you get married. No, nah, because if someone makes you get married, someone has to make you stay married. Right? But we should enter into a union with uh, the with our mate, our, our uh, 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 mate opposite sex, um, through wisdom and revelation, right? And not just jump into it for the sake of uh, I think I'm ready. Let's just go ahead and do it now. Nah, do you know him? Not only do you know God, do you know the person that you're about to marry, right? Uh, we have to put wisdom on the table before we make these decisions because divorce is not our way out of out of marriage. I'm talking to those that have been saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to bring that up, um, uh, I think, on Wednesday. Um, and, and what Solomon says is better not to make a vow, you know, if you can't keep it. So the answer is no. Divorce is not an option. Period. Because you know what we have to do? We have responsibilities. Grown people make grown people's decisions. And so you have, as a married uh, individual, you now have the responsibility to do whatever it takes to maintain your marital bliss. Now, I know every day is not going to be great. You know, it's, you're not going to be swinging from the chandeliers every day. 
but that still should not shake the foundation and the core of you believing that God told you to marry the mate that you have. That we don't enter into this thing just, just for the sake of it. Oh, I think I'm old enough now, so I need to go ahead and settle down. That's no reason to get married. Uh, no. Mm -mm. The text says again, so the Pharisees came to him and asked, is it, is, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Hey, Tanya, good morning, ma'am. Any and every reason? And Jesus says, haven't you read? He replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for, the, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. So Jesus is saying to answer these Pharisees, no, it is not lawful for a man to leave his wife, uh, his marriage for any, divorce his wife for any and every reason, no. It, it, now he takes it back to the beginning, original, the original context of marriage is that a man and a woman comes together um, and to become one. And that man leaves his father and mother to be united with his wife. Um, the reason why divorce is such a, a, was such an option and is still an option for us is because a lot of us have not removed those major influences from our single days. Mm-hmm. You see, a man has got to leave his mother's and father's influence and cling to his wife, unite with his wife. Listen, y'all, that's why you have to make a choose selection about who you marry. If you can't cling to your wife, if you can't unite with your wife on every level, you um, went into your whole marriage with the wrong framework. Your mind wasn't right. Part of it being personal, uh, but when we got married, let me tell you one thing that we didn't do. I did not go to my parents' house. So we lived in Austin then when we first got married. So I didn't go to my parents' house on Sundays to eat. Um, you know, every now and then, you know, I, maybe we could have gone over there. But I didn't make it a habit of always going, stopping by my parents' house. Because I knew there was a piece of me that I wanted to go over there, but I knew I had to start a new life with my wife. When we got married, I was living in Austin. My wife is living in San Antonio. So she was moving in on my turf where everybody knew me. And so I didn't want to put her in situations, not necessarily with my family, but situations where it's always, oh, hey, Demi, oh, and hey, Alexis, you know, that kind of thing. So I had to put us in situations where I even had to cling to her as she was clinging to me. So I had to um, release myself emotionally from those outside influences. Now, those influences were great. And my parents are still great in my life. And, and even speaking into my marriage, still great. Yet there's a piece of work within me that if I didn't deal with me leaning on that, then there could possibly become issues with my wife and I later on. Remember, rehab is for me. It's for you. It's not for anybody else. It's not for your mate. It's for you because you're the one in rehab, right? We've got to release ourselves from the influence of outside sources. Even though those sources have been consistent and are good, it's our task to yoke up and unite with our spouse. If we don't, divorcing our wives for any and every reason now becomes a possible idea. Well, I don't see why not. <laughs> and Jesus, what does he do? He takes them back to the original source and says, listen, this is not how it was intended to be. The only reason why, and we'll see this tomorrow, that God allowed Moses to let those men in Israel divorce their wives. Here's a reason. The only reason is because their hearts had become hardened. Yeah. So we're going to talk about a hardened heart tomorrow. Their hearts had become hardened. And so Moses, not God, Moses allowed men to divorce their wives. Hey, Miss Anita, good morning to you. Lord, shame, shame, shame. So let's be clear. Divorce is not an option. 
if you have been saved, we do not uh, balance our relationships and to think that we can get out of it when we don't like it. We got to fight for it. All right. Now, listen, let me say this because I, I don't want you to tune me out for the rest of the week. What we do, what we have to do is um, we have to allow the power of the Lord to soften our hearts so that we can forgive those that hurt us in previous relationships and marriages. I'm not suggesting that you got to go back and marry everybody you divorced because some of y'all will be entirely too busy. That's entirely too much going on. No, 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 no. But we have been given free grace from God that has forgiven us for whatever transgressions that we have done. So now we have to make sure we do the work for our hearts so we don't take this same hardened heart into another relationship. That's why you're in rehab. That's why you're in rehab. So we can get ourselves where we need to be so that our heart's in the right position to love on God and to walk in obedience as he makes himself known to us. So can a man divorce his wife? Should a man divorce his wife for any and every reason? A Christian man? No. No, no, no. We're going to have a great time continuing to, to, to build on this for the week. All right, so let, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the accountability of your word. Thank you for you um, always revealing truth to us through your written word and through how the, your spirit speaks to us daily. Father, we thank you and we love you. And we, and we acknowledge the fact that we've had some, some bad relationships and some may have been married um, and divorced and possibly married again. Father, we thank you for forgiving us of all of that. Uh, and, uh, it, and, and for some of us, it's because our, 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 our mates' hearts became hardened. And so, Father, whatever those results are from having to live with a person that had a hardened heart, thank you for healing us. Thank you for restoring our hearts and restoring our minds so that we will be in position to receive the blessing that you have for us for the present and for the future and that could be with another mate. It could may not be with another mate, but we, 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 we will stay in this rehab to do the work for us so that our hearts will be ready and we don't hold um, the next person accountable to something that the other person did. So Father, thank you for making us whole. Thank you for restoring us. And we will always give you the praise, the honor and the glory for making yourself known to us, wisdom and revelation in Jesus name. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to continuing this conversation this week. And so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 19 for the rest of the week. So go ahead and read up on it so we can engage in, um, in more and deeper conversation. All right. Don't forget, if you want to see my favorite person, you know what to do. Just turn around, look in the mirror. If you want to follow us and um, even closer, um, download the One Church app. Go to Tithely, Tithely in your, um, your app store or whatever, however you get your apps and um, look at one church. And if you can't, if you have a hard time downloading it, just inbox me and I'll send you a request um, so you can join and be a part of us, follow the, the church and all these Mac in the mornings are, are up there and sermons are there. Um, so thank you for your um, consideration. Have a fantastical day and we'll see you tomorrow. Um, don't forget, you want to see my favorite person, you know what to do. Turn around and look in the mirror. All right. Bye-bye.